So AI avatars have leveled up in a big way. Of course, leading to the question, am I real or am I an AI avatar? Spoilers, I have five fingers, so I am real. Why would you choose this face anyhow? But today we are going to check in on the latest with AI avatar generation. It's pretty impressive. Plus, I've got a spot where you can try it out for free. Black Forest Labs have released Context, which if you haven't been following the latest Flux news, is a pretty big deal. It's definitely opening up the door to a lot of possibilities. We'll take a look at that today. I've also got a look at Topaz's new creative AI image upscaler. I'm actually pretty excited about this one. All that plus Sora goes free. Well, kinda, I mean, asterisk, but you know, it's Sora. So there's always an asterisk. So if you've been pretty much anywhere on the internet over the last week or so, you have definitely run across a VO3 generated person on the street interview. I'm a real person, I know I am. Yeah. I mean, why would someone waste credits on prompting this scene? But what about the more, I guess like studio based YouTubers? Well, as it turns out, AI avatars weren't going to let VO3 roll all over them. So yes, there are a number of updates coming up. Uh, for example, later today, actually, HeyGen has a, their big presentation. I'm sure we'll be covering that later on in the week. Hunyan also has a new AI avatar generator, uh, but the one that came out of the gate pretty strong this week was Mirage Studios from Captions. And this is one that you can try out right now for free. And it's actually pretty impressive. Now, of course, as always, there are a few caveats. We'll go over those in a second. But for now, let's take a look at Mirage. A look at Mirage. Uh, well, let's take a look at Mirage. No, because I've actually never found something that works this well. I didn't believe it either until I tried it out. And now I'm obsessed. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, there are a couple of tricks in there. You might have actually caught them. Uh, we'll talk about those in just one second. But for now, let's go hop in Mirage. So you can sign up for Mirage for free. Uh, they give you 600 credits with one second of generated video uh, equaling 10 credits. So essentially a minute. So no, you won't be putting together a two and a half hour long podcast, uh, but there's definitely enough here to put together, uh, you know, a TikTok, a uh, YouTube short, or like something for your Instagram reels. There are definitely a lot of options here, which actually did impress me. You can upload your own audio if you want to, or you can generate text to speech. And there are a number of preset voices here, uh, ranging from you know, open AI voices, 11 labs voices are in here. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, Play HT is in here. So yeah, uh, you know, a number of voices that you can choose from. So for my first test, I was interested in uploading my own audio and then using an image of myself to see what we would get. Um, I did end up using a quick clip of an intro from a video that we did a few days ago. And just to note, the audio here is a little on the buzzy side. I was running into a problem with that. I finally figured it out. It was actually this light. So once the audio is uploaded, you hit continue. And here's where things get uh, a little on the tricky side. If you'll note, um, there are these sliders here uh, and essentially, it's generating four separate clips uh, out of each one of these. So that that is the reason that, like in the promotional material, you did see a lot of jump cuts. So once your audio has been chopped, you can then go through and you know choose one of their avatars, or you can upload your own image. From there, it'll generate an audition for you. I think taking like the first five seconds of your avatar and running that just to see if it's something that uh, you want to commit to. That said, I did do this in advance. So well, let's take a look at what we got here. So one of the most frequent questions in the channel comments is what is the best image generator? Well, today we're going to answer that question, but with a unique spin that I think is going to serve you better than the you know typical top 10 list. So admittedly, not the kindest to me. Uh, it definitely struggles uh, with teeth. Uh, that's been kind of an ongoing issue. Definitely has a look that like I've been eating spinach all night long and nobody's handed me a toothpick. But where I think it does pretty well is when you use well essentially synthetic characters, uh, for example, taking my same audio and uh, giving it to this guy uh, who definitely has some sort of like drone DIY channel on YouTube. Uh, he's got the cool lights too that aren't causing his microphone to buzz. So one of the most frequent questions in the channel comments is what is the best image generator? Well, today we're going to answer that question, but with a unique spin that I think is going to serve you better than the you know typical top 10 list. So now that we've run a real person with a real voice and a synthetic character with a real voice. I mean, obviously the next thing to do was to run synthetic to synthetic. So I ended up using one of their template characters to create like a small influencer for my channel. Ever wonder how to bring your creative visions to life using the latest AI tools? 
You have to check out Theoretically Media. Tim makes AI tech fun, accessible, and honestly, pretty mind-blowing. Hey, thanks, AI-generated recent college graduate. If you need a letter of recommendation, I will have ChatGPT write one for you. Now, there is one additional option that we have here, uh, which is being able to generate your own character. So uh, I ended up generating up this guy uh, and then using a real voice. So now we have, you know, synthetically generated on-platform character and real voice. And, well, this is what we got. Listen, people, it's time we have a talk. You think I'm AI generated? You ever look into the mirror? You ever think to yourself, maybe you're the one that's AI generated? Maybe I prompted you. So overall, I do think that Mirage is off to a pretty promising start. There are, of course, a few issues. For one, those four second jump cuts are a little on the distracting side. You know what it actually reminds me of is old school YouTube where we would all talk like this because no one knew how to edit. But there are some creative ways around that. For example, as, as they demonstrate in their own sizzle reel here, um, just, you know, cutting away to some B-roll. Or in the case of, you know, kind of this mock podcast, if you cut away to either two shots or the reverse angle, it's another creative way of getting around that four second limitation. Now, all that said, we do have to talk about price. Uh, yes, because Mirage Studio is, uh, well, it's $199 today for the first month and then $399 a month after that. So I definitely think that shows that they are much more aiming for like the enterprise and corporate level of clients. That said, I mean, you do have your free hundred credits to generate up, you know, a minute of AI video. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to give it a shot. Moving on, Black Forest Labs have released context or flow matching for in-context image generation and editing in latent space. That doesn't spell context at all. Now, because this is Black Forest Labs and Flux, we're pretty much going to be seeing this everywhere. I think it's a pretty big deal. And on top of that, we're at the very early stages of context. So uh, we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of interesting workflows and ideas coming out of it. Basically, this is not the last time context is going to come up. But for today, we're going to be exploring it on Leonardo.ai, who were kind enough to sponsor today's video. So at baseline, what Context is doing is working as an image editor, and it is pretty good at it. For example, checking in with our old pal, the man in the blue business suit uh, over on Leonardo. I can, of course, pick any you know one of the image models. We're just going to use Flux Dev here and give it the prompt, a man in a blue business suit on a deserted desert highway uh, trying to hitchhike. Now, to note, last time we saw our man in the blue business suit, he did have his wolf buddy in there, and I did forget to add him in. Um, so what we can do with Flux Context is simply issue the prompt, add in a wolf walking in the background. Uh, will it generate? And sure enough, we now have our AI generated good boy hanging out in the shallow end of the depth of field. I'll give you that. Uh, but again, he's a wolf. He may not trust our man in the blue business suit yet. If we want to continue editing on here, uh, we could even do things like uh, change this to a wide angle lens. And of course we now have a full bodied wide angle shot of our guy walking down the deserted highway. He's always walking in the street. Um, that's why that's how we got in trouble with all those jaywalking tickets to begin with. Now we're gonna circle back to our guy in just a minute, but as you can see, you know, it's very easy to even go as far as to change the time of day. Now, I do have to say that some of the stuff that I'm most impressed with is some of the simplest stuff. Uh, for example, just taking, this is an old older generation that I ran. Um, and then if we just simply issue the prompt to change the building behind her red, we end up with this, which is, you know, to be honest, exactly what we asked for. But I think the thing that's really impressive to me is the fact that, you know, you could do this manually in Photoshop and depending on your skill level, it would take anywhere between like, I don't know, like five or 10 minutes or let's say, uh, whereas context was able to do this in like less than a minute. Even going back to older images, such as, you know, our girl, Daniela Van Den Ock, dressed as a pirate. Uh, fun fact, this was actually originally generated on Leonardo. Uh, at some point or another, I must have been playing around with a canvas feature. We got somewhere in the neighborhood of here. Uh, but instead of, you know, creating boxes to canvas everything out, I can simply, you know, say, fill in the white space with details from this image. And sure enough, we end up with an outpainted image. And if I don't like the spray here, I can simply issue a prompt that says, take the ocean spray out of the front of that boat and you know all of the other details remain the same uh, we'll be circling back to our girl in a little bit and again there's going to be crazy use cases that end up coming out of context uh, but in the meantime i mean just again the simplest little stuff of like issue a prompt like turn the light off and now our guy is sitting in the dark like a big weirdo hey buddy turn that light back on now turn it off now turn it on again 
See, that's fun. Now I'll say one added ingredient that Leonardo threw in here is the ability to take your image uh, and then further edit it using uh, the GPT image one model. Now, personally, I do go a bit back and forth on the GPT image model. Uh, that said, I cannot knock it on both text and uh, on prompt adherence. Um, so running this with, uh, turn this into a comic book image with the word balloon pointed at the man saying, I sure hope we catch in a ride soon. We do indeed end up with pretty much exactly what we asked for. Man, I cannot wait to see who ends up picking him up. A couple of other quick hits on the Leonardo side. Uh, one thing I always like to highlight with them is their upscaler. I've always been a really big fan of this one. So, you know, taking our, our cool guy in the leather jacket here. Uh, and if you just hit the upscale button, it does a pretty solid job. I know we'll be taking a look at another upscaler in just a little bit. But again, I just want to highlight um, the Leonardo upscaler has been a recent favorite of mine. From here, we also can obviously generate to video. And what they have added in is uh, motion controls as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of the stuff that we've seen kind of recently, but it's very handy to have it right here on platform. Um, for this guy, uh, I mean, for this guy, we got to go with explosion, right? And from here, we do end up with a slow motion cool guy walking away from an explosion, not looking back because that is what cool guys do. They never look back at explosions. A few other motion presets here, like the robo arm uh, does a very good job here with this character. This one is kind of more in the you know, stock video kind of side of things. Funny thing about this tying back to context is that uh, that big honking Mac that's right there. Yeah, the, the old iMac from like 2001. The original image was actually the more modern Mac and actually ended up uh, using context to change it out to I think the prompt was uh, a Mac from 2001. So I kind of nailed it there. So all that said, if you haven't been over to Leonardo in a while, it might be a good time to swing over and check out what they've got. I do know that they'll be releasing a new model called Lucid pretty soon, kind of like cinematic realism. So uh, we'll check that out when it drops. In the meantime, a uh, link to Leonardo is down below. Rolling over to Topaz, the OGs of image upscaling. Now, I've always been pretty keen on utilizing Topaz's video upscaler for AI generated video. I think that that's pretty much uh, like industry standard at this point. On the image side, I'll say that Topaz has never really like fully dipped their toe into creative AI image upscaling. They, you know, they have a great photo upscaler, uh, but it has always remained, you know, just an upscaler. Well, until now, at least. So Topaz now has Bloom, and uh, you may or may not be able to uh, get beta access to it right now. Uh, I'll have a link to this down below. The, yesterday was Bloom Day, in which they opened up the front door and let everybody raid their GPUs. So, you know, I got it in as many as I could. What I was most interested in trying out with Bloom was taking some like older images and seeing what it could do. Um, so this was a uh, mid journey generated image of like wizards walking towards a, uh, a wizard castle keep. Um, you can change the amount of creativity uh, from subtle all the way up to max. Uh, and then you have the ability to issue a prompt in as well. We'll take a look at the importance of that in just a minute. Uh, and then from there you can upscale it um, either leaving it exactly at the same raster size are going 8x up. So it's pretty big. Um, so running this, and I ran this at either very strong or max. I mean, pretty much that's, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, the results are pretty impressive. Um, yeah, it definitely ends up cleaning this image up a considerable amount. Another one that really ended up impressing me, uh, this was actually generated in flux, kind of a you know surrealist thing. And then running this through the uh, the Bloom model, uh, we ended up with, I mean, a considerable amount more detail. Um, yeah, it looks really pretty good. I think when you really punch in on something like the leaves over here, um, you really notice it in both the brick texture uh, and the, the foliage. Um, bridge back here really cleans up as well. Uh, this was done at a 2x upscale, so you can punch in a little bit more. Now, granted, when you start reaching like 418%, it starts, you know, kind of breaking up a little bit, but it's also it's all 418 percent now in terms of your prompt changing uh your image yes it, it, it absolutely can do that uh, as promised once again daniela van den Ankh dressed as a pirate uh and then issuing the prompt um you know a photographic look or photographic styles uh and then running this i want to say this was a strong um 2x upscale here uh we do indeed end up with a you know photorealistic output Two things that have been really kind of blown away by uh, is, well, hair texture for one. I mean, that's really good. Um, and then, of course, eyes as well. Um, yeah, that looks, looks, it's really convincing. 
Continuing on with prompting, uh, this was an image that I always liked, kind of uh, Jules Verne, sort of like Parisian steampunk, I guess. Um, so writing this with with just no prompt whatsoever, we end up with something like this, which which isn't bad. Um, it's definitely getting pretty creative. Uh, I think this was at max creativity. Um, but, you know, we do end up with these uh, kind of like modern uh, brutalist buildings in the background. Um, I will note as well, like uh, this guy here changed into a building. Um, but, you know, for the most part, not quite the look that I was aiming for. So, you know, rerunning it with kind of more like uh, Victorian steampunk uh, keywords, we end up here, which definitely does have much more of like that look that I was aiming for. This poor guy back here just keeps turning into like a structure of some kind. That is the thing with creative upscalers. Like you have to kind of lean into it. Now you can, uh, you know, creatively upscale at low, but uh, to me, that's not as fun. I will say that there are some problem spots. Uh, for one, it does have the tendency to change the color grading of your images. Uh, two, um, skin tones do go a bit flat, I guess. Here's another image that ends up showcasing that. It's not, again, it's not bad or anything, but um, you know, the, the skin does look still a little bit on the smooth side there. And for sure, uh, we're definitely getting, you know, a change in the color grade. Now, one place I think you can really see it shine is with uh, like these illustrated type images, um, you know, highly detailed. And then you've run this through at a max creativity. Um, I mean, that's, it's, it's added in a considerable amount of detail. Now, whether this level of rendering is appealing to, you know, your personal aesthetic tastes, um, that's, I mean, that's up to you. I think it looks pretty great. As always, link to Topaz is down below. I don't know if they're still letting people in uh, for early access on Bloom. Uh, if not, I will definitely let you know when, you know, the, the full version is released. Rounding out, Sora is now free, I mean, kind of at least. Um, yeah, apparently, if you go over to bing.com uh, forward slash create, you can then uh, use a QR code to uh, get the Bing app on your phone and generate Sora videos. Now, the caveats here are that it is only generating five second videos, um, only does nine by 16. You get 10 fast generations. And then after that, uh, it can take up to hours. So I don't necessarily know if that juice is worth the squeeze for most of us. But I, what I think is interesting about this is definitely a move on the Microsoft and OpenAI side of things to I, I kind of quell the bleeding of Google and VO3. The rumor mill is very much starting to churn about Sora 2. That may actually be a thing. And look, I've been super critical about Sora. Um, that said, I, I'm still a fan. I, I, want, I want it to be good. So hopefully this is at least signaling like some sort of revival for Sora. Uh, in the meantime, you can head over to bing.com and uh, you know generate some five second Sora videos. Tell Sydney I said hi. I guess that's it for today. I'm gonna go check the news and we'll find out what our next video is about. Uh, hey, my thanks to Leonardo for sponsoring today's video. And as always, my thanks to you for watching. My name is Tim.